This is Mr. O'Brien here, and this is your topic six video for the Keystone exams coming up on the end, end of the year. Now, topic six covers protein synthesis. And remember, what we're going to be talking about here is not just protein synthesis, but one of the central dogma ideas of biology and that our genes are expressed using proteins. So we're going to be talking about translation, transcription, and how our body expresses these genes. So first thing we have to talk about is DNA. Now, almost every living organism on Earth uses DNA as their hereditary information. So when DNA replicates themselves, it uses an enzyme called DNA polymerase. Okay, And what DNA polymerase does is it's located right here in yellow, is it comes along and it adds nucleotides to a DNA strand. Now, when it does this, it's called a semi-conservative uh, way of doing it. Now, what semi-conservative means is one of the strands come, is an old strand, and uh, the other strand comes from a new strand, which the nucleotides are added to using DNA polymerase. So again, one old, one new strand, semi-conservative. Again, one new, one old to get our two new strands. So another molecule that is used during DNA replication is this molecule right here called helicase. And helicase is like a zipper, and it comes through and it unzips these hydrogen bonds inside of this. And when it unzips it, it allows this DNA polymerase to come in and add those nucleotides to the other end. Now again, our base pairing rule that we have in DNA is that adenine binds with thymine and cytosine binds with guanine. So in other words, A bonds with T, and C bonds with G. This base pairing rule, all of our DNA is composed of just these four nucleotides. So again, as we're going through, adenine binds with uh, thymine, cytosine binds with guanine. Now, the bonds that hold DNA together, there's two different ones that we have here. We have hydrogen bonds, which is the bond that holds the two strands together, and this forms between the nucleotides. Okay, and the other bond that we're going to have is a covalent bond. And the covalent bond, which is located right here, okay, is holding the backbone or the sugar molecules together. So this right here, these bonds in the backbone or in the sugar are our covalent bonds. And again, that is our sharing of electrons. Now, in between the, mo or the two strands of DNA are hydrogen bonds that hold the two strands together. So again, covalent holds the backbone together, hydrogen holds the two strands together, okay? Now, when we are forming a complementary strand of DNA, it always goes in the um, five or the three to five prime direction, okay? So when we make our, our strand, DNA is gonna go to three to five, okay? And what's gonna happen is on this side, you're going to have a three prime. On this side, you're going to have a five prime. Okay? And as this molecule forms, I'm sorry, I said it the wrong way. It goes three to five. Okay? So adenine binds with thymine. Okay? Thymine binds with adenine. And what happens is we are going to form a complementary strand of DNA. So whatever that molecule binds with, is how we're going to form the opposite end of that DNA strand, okay? So now we just formed a complementary strand of DNA. This is how our body continuously goes through and adds and makes new DNA strands. Now, it, our body is a very good proofreader, and there is an enzyme that proofreads this DNA to make sure the right nucleotides are added. Now, this is so accurate that there are only, it only allows one mistake for every 10 billion things it checked. Now, that is better than a supercomputer. So it, it's, it's amazing how our body is able to do these things. Now, DNA is made of many, um, many um, how do I say, monomers called nucleotides. Now, those nucleotides, they form and bind together to form nucleic acids. Now, DNA is composed of three parts. And that first part is a sugar base. Now that sugar we have is deoxyribose, 
okay? Now, attached to each one of those sugar molecules is our nitrogenous base. And this nitrogenous base, I'm not going to draw everything, okay? I'm just going to put nitrogenous base, is the is like the adenine or the thymine, the guanine, whatever that nitrogenous base is, the, it pretty much shows what we have in this structure. Now, on the other side, again, this is, on the other side, we have our phosphate group. And in this phosphate group, what happens is we have a phosphorus bonded to a bunch of different oxygens here. So again, we have our phosphate group, which is this right here. We have our sugar, in this case for DNA, deoxyribose sugar. Again, sugar is forming in a, um, in a carbon structure. And our nitrogenous base. Again, this is what gives it its characteristics. So again, that is what our nucleotides or is composed of. Now, <clears throat> DNA is a very important molecule. Now, RNA is equally as important. So if DNA is the whole textbook in biology, what RNA is is the page that you need right now in your class. So in other words, it's like a teacher making a photocopy of an exact page that you are need so you're not having to flip through all the genetic information. So you want to think of this. DNA is composed of many genes, okay? Now, these genes are the specific segment that codes for something in particular. The RNA pretty much is the molecule that is expressing that gene. So RNA is not, is, has a different sugar. It's called ribonucleic acid. And instead of double-stranded, or instead of double-stranded like in DNA, RNA is single-stranded and is an intermediate between the DNA and the protein. So what happens is when the DNA molecule, we have a specific gene here that we want to express. This single RNA strand is, is made so that it can then go to the ribosomes and make the protein that our body needs. So we do this through a process of transcription. Now transcription is making RNA from DNA, and this occurs inside of our nucleus. So the nucleus is the center or the, the control center of the cell and controls our, or holds our genetic information. So DNA, sorry guys, DNA is in the cell and we have a specific gene that we need to be expressed. The RNA comes in and is formed and then that is sent on to be expressed for our protein molecule. Transcription is simply from DNA, we are making an RNA molecule. Now, transcription, the only thing different about DNA and RNA is that, you know, in DNA, our binding pattern is A binds with T and C bonds with G. Now, it's different in RNA. RNA is, has one difference in the nucleotides. So, thymine, or I'm sorry, adenine no longer binds with thymine. It binds with a molecule called uracil. Okay? And, yeah, draw it the same way on both sides. And cytosine still binds with guanine. So, in other words, A bonds with U, C bonds with G. So, during transcription, only a single-stranded copy of RNA is made. And again, the only difference is right here. Adenine binds with uracil instead of adenine binding with thymine in DNA. So translation is when we are making our proteins. So we're making proteins here from that RNA strand. Okay? So translation is... We're making these proteins in the structure called the ribosomes. Ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm as well as on the rough ER. Okay? Now, mRNA, it leaves the nucleus during transcription 
and it goes to these ribosomes. Now, this is translation process. So those ribosomes, again, locate in the cytoplasm as well as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, when we are making that protein, our body only reads three nucleotides at a time. And these three nucleotides at a time are called codons, okay? So these codons allow our body to, or allow our body to say which amino acid needs to be bond here. And we do this, okay? So this strand is our mRNA strand that comes out, and tRNA is the strand that brings the amino acids to the ribosomes, okay? So they allow this amino acid to come in and they bind and that is what allows our amino acid chain to grow. So in other words, three sequences at a time. So three, three, three. Each one of these codons codes for a specific amino acid in our body. And as that mRNA scrolls through, that amino acid chain begins to grow to form our proteins. Again, so translation, just an overflight simplified process here, okay? So here is our codon, our three code sequence, and each one of these codons codes for a specific amino acid. Whatever that amino acid is, we will talk about that a little later. So as this molecule, it's going to scroll through this way. As it scrolls through, new tRNA molecules come in and bring an amino acid in, and it forms a chain using our peptide bonds, okay? So again, translation is from RNA making our proteins, all right? So how our body knows what amino acid to bring in is, you know, these tRNAs are composed of a specific sequence. So we have figured this out. And we have these charts to identify what, you know, what um, these MR or RNA strands are coding. So the first letter we have is AUG. Now how we use this, we have two different ways of reading this. So <clears throat> AUG, first position, A. Second position, U. Third position, so A, U, G. Now that codes for something called metazine, M-E-T. And that is a start codon, okay? And so again, you go first letter, C. Second letter, U. Third letter, U. Second one we're going to code for is leucine, okay? Now again, third one. Same type of thing, first letter C, second letter C, 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 A, okay, P, R, O, okay? Then we go G, A, G, A, G would be glucine. And then finally we go U, G, now, you'll notice this is a stop codon, which means that this is then released, okay? So now that tells the tRNA that that is the last thing to release from the ribosomes. Now, you can also do it another way over here. Now, if you do it with this type of chart, you start in the middle, A, and work your way out, A, U, G. And again, you'll always get the same one, medicine, same one, C, U, U, leucine, C, C, A, um, protein, or uh, protein, okay? And then G, A, G, glucine. And then finally, U, G, A, which is our stop. Again, two different charts, two different way of reading these amino acids. So our body sometimes does screw up this process. And when we screw this up or we have a change in our DNA sequence, that is called a mutation. Now, a point mutation is just when we have a single one or two base pairs that are changed. Now, that could be insertion, deletion, or even substitution. Insertion, as you can see right here, is when a nucleotide is added in. And what that does is it shifts all of the reading codons that we have. Deletion, the one is taken out. Again, shifting all of those codons so that the protein is not made properly. So a frame shift is the change in the codon reading. So 
I like to think of it like this. The cat, okay, is, let's think of that as two codons. So let's just say, for example, I have a deletion. The E is screwed up. So now what my new code is going to be is, okay, so you see it doesn't make any sense. So when we have these mutations, it screws up our reading sequence. Now, a couple other things that we want to talk about here is silent mutations, missense mutations, and nonsense mutations. So silent mutations are one that, that doesn't have any change in the amino acid sequence. And how it couldn't have any change is because some of these codes, they all code for the same amino acid. So it could be possible that it, the mutation doesn't cause anything whatsoever. A missense is like an insertion, deletion, or substitution in that um, it causes the message to be changed. And the worst one that we have is a nonsense mutation, which just says the stop codon is created and the amino acid is not formed at all. So of them all, this guy is the worst. So kind of give you a little explanation here of what we're talking about um, so here would be our normal, uh, our normal strand here. And I'm going to use this the the cat eight the rat. Okay, so that is a normal sentence. The cat ate the rat. Now, when we have this one is a substitution here. So we are going to substitute, which one am I going to substitute? And this letter right here for an H. So this is a missense substitution. So again, the, we're going to substitute H, the hat, eight, the rat. So again, you notice that it's a slightly different sequence that we have. Now, nonsense is one that this whole sequence doesn't show up. And the last one I want to do is a frame shift. And just kind of a review this to show you. Okay? So in this case, this one, all we're going to insert another T, and it's going to screw up. So you see here, and again, remember, codons only read in threes. And you'll notice in this one that every reading sequence, because we inserted that T right here, is moved down one. So the phrase no longer makes sense. Okay? Now, from this stuff, transcription, translation, um, this is what's known as the central dogma of biology. So we start with our DNA, which is in our nucleus. And what happens is in that DNA, we turn that into RNA through a process called transcription. Okay? That RNA is then converted into proteins. So this is done in the cytoplasm. And this process of turning... RNA into proteins is called translation, okay? So the central dogma, DNA, is converted to RNA through transcription. RNA is converted into proteins through translation. And remember, proteins make our body run. Proteins are a very important molecule. This is what lets our body know what to do. All right, guys, so this is our topic six review on protein synthesis. Hopefully this helps you out for the Keystone exam. This is Mr. O'Brien signing off.